In this video, we are going to build the basis of a free screen Canvas Power App. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. So in a previous video, I created in SharePoint a list called Practice Activity 7 SharePoint, and there are three items. So what I'm going to do in Power Apps is create a new Canvas app based on this SharePoint list. Now I could do this automatically, you could start with data, but I'm going to create it from scratch for this particular video. So I'll go to create, blank app, blank canvas app and click on create. So this is going to be a canvas app from scratch and I'm going to have a phone, a telephone format. So click create and then it creates just the shell of this app. So just the one screen and nothing else. So I need some data. So I'll go to data and I'll add data and I'll go to connectors because I need to connect to my SharePoint list. So I'll see all connectors and it's probably actually just quicker if I just type in the word SharePoint. So I'll go to SharePoint. I will connect directly using cloud services. So your data might be Excel, your data might be the Dataverse, which is the database on the cloud, on the same cloud as the Power Platform. But however you connect to your data, I'm going to click connect there. I need to enter the SharePoint URL. So I will just copy the entirety of this list. I could do just the site, but I'll copy the list and click connect and then select the list itself and go to connect. So my data is now connected. Now I just need to be able to see it. So I'm going to insert a vertical gallery. So this is going to show all of my items. I'll just drag it down a bit and I'm going to connect it to my data source. So I'll go over to data source. There was also a bit on the right hand side I could use and I'll click on my data source and there we can see this is my first item, this is my second item and this is my third item exactly as I've got it in the SharePoint gallery. I don't particularly want to see what's underneath it so I'll go to layout and I'll change the layout to just title only and I'll extend it down. So I go to my tree view. I'm going to rename this as my browse screen and this gallery as my browse gallery. We will be using browse gallery later on. So next I'm going to create a second screen. So I'll go to new screen and blank and I will rename this as my detail screen. So what I want to be able to see is the details of any one particular item that I click on in my gallery. So for this, I'm going to insert a form and this is going to be a display form. So let's click that. Let's drag that down slightly and I'll connect it to data and it's going to be the same data. So I can click in a variety of places. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't know what particular item it wants me to use. So I will go to advance and in the item I will type in this browse gallery again and you can see the computer is auto completing and then a dot and then selected. So the browse gallery is the actual component and then a dot will give me access to the properties in this case selected. I could then put another dot if I wanted to go down to a specific property but I don't in this case. So here is, this is my first item. So now let's connect the two. So I'll go to the browse gallery and I will go to the on select. So the on select for the actual arrow says select parent. In other words, do whatever the parent does. So I'll go to the browse gallery using the breadcrumbs at the bottom and you can see that the on select is false. In other words, it doesn't do anything. Well, let's get it to do something. So I wanted to navigate to the detail screen and I can also use a transition. So let's say cover right and close the bracket. And then if I go back into my detail screen, I need a way of going back to the browse gallery. So I will insert an icon. I'll insert a back arrow, drag that up to the top. And in the on select there, I will say back. And actually I will have a screen transition which is going to be uncover. So let's go back to the browse screen and let's play. So I'll click on my second item and you can see this is my second item. Click on the third item and so forth. 
You can also navigate through the screens in the studio by holding down Alt and then just clicking. I'm going to make this look a bit better. I'm going to insert a rectangle and put that at the top. So I'll change the color. So go into properties and go into color and just make it a lighter blue. And I'm going to insert on top of that a text label. Just resize it and its text is going to be SharePoint list. So let's copy both of these items into the detail screen. And now I can't see the icon, so that's okay. What I'll do is click on the rectangle and I'll reorder it, send to back. There we go. So now it's looking a bit more stylish. So let's change this from SharePoint list to SharePoint list detail. Right, so far, so good. Next, I want a third screen so I can edit. So this will be an edit screen. And this is also going to contain a form, except this is going to be an edit form. So again, I need to connect it to data. So I'll use my same data source and I want to connect to the same item. So in the advanced in item, it's going to go to the browse gallery dot selected again. So what we need now is a way to go from the detail screen to the edit screen. So I will add another icon, an edit icon, put that in the top right hand corner. And so for this, I will change the form to make sure it's on an edit form. You can see it's called form one. I need to rename that. And then a semicolon, you might need two semicolons depending on where you are. If you use a comma, to separate thousands, you just need the one. If you use a dot to separate thousands, then you'll need two. And then I'm going to navigate to the edit screen. And let's change the name of form one to be edit form. So now my formula is edit form, the edit form, and then navigate edit screen. And let's now have a button to save the changes if I make any changes. So I will go to insert and add a check icon. Or let's also get those two items, the rectangle and the title just to prettify it a bit. So this SharePoint list is now going to say SharePoint list edit stroke add, because that's what you can do with it. You can do both. And you can see if I put the check icon behind the rectangle, it's going to be lost. So I need to bring that to the front. There we go. So what happens when I select that, when I click on it, I want it to submit this edit form. And then if the changes are successful to the edit form, then on success, I want to go back to the previous screen. I also need a cancel icon. And if it's not successful, then I want something happening with this form. Now let's say I can't remember what it is, but I do remember it's something to do with a the form. Then I'll just type in the word form and have a look at the various commands and I've got reset form. So I'm going to reset this edit form and then I'm going to go back. So let's see what's happened, if anything. If I run this app, I will click on my second item. I will edit it. So I will say this is my second item, part two. I'll click the check mark and you can see that the change has been reflected in the detail and in my gallery. I'll have a look at the first item. So I'll put part two there, but I'm going to cancel the changes and you can see the changes have been canceled. Let's go to my actual list and I will refresh and you can see that the part two addition has been added to the actual SharePoint list. It is successfully interacting with the SharePoint list. Let's add another icon. So this icon is going to be used for a new item. So let's look for the word add. 
So there we go. And for this, I'm going to, again, do something to the form. It's going to be a new form. So a new form for my existing edit form. And then I'm going to navigate to the edit screen. Let's add another icon in the detail screen, a trash can to delete an item. So let's look for the word trash. There it is. So in the on select for this, I want to remove something from my data source. So if I start typing here, we can see practice activity seven SharePoint, and I want to delete the currently selected item. So that is browse gallery dot selected. And then I don't need to be on the screen anymore. So I will navigate back to the browse screen. So let's test this again. So if I go back to the browse screen, another way is by using this drop down here. So let's go back to the browse screen. Let's add a new item. So this is my fourth item. And we go back to the SharePoint list gallery. And there you can see this is my fourth item. And if I refresh my actual list, there you can see my fourth item. And now let's click inside of it. Let's edit it. So this is my fourth item part three. So that's been edited. Let's check to make sure that's been reflected. And then finally, let's bin it. And you can see it's no longer there in the gallery and it is no longer there in the SharePoint list. And let's add one more icon for this video. So that icon will be a refresh. So reload icon and this uses the refresh data source. So now if somebody else or even me add something into the SharePoint list, so let's just play. So I'm going to add in, this is my fifth item. It's not currently there in my gallery, but if I click refresh, there it is. So in this video, we've had a look at how we can make a basic free screen canvas power app. Now there's more that we can do. We can sort, for instance, we can add sorting icon. We can also do a search. Now, if we have a look at the Microsoft Applied Skills credentials, which were announced starting in October 2023, you can see one of them is create and manage canvas apps with power apps. And the requirements, create a canvas app from scratch, done that. Connect a canvas app to a data source, done that. Configure a gallery, detail screen and an input screen. And then finally, save and publish a canvas app. So let's save it. So we've got save icon at the top right. And then let's publish it. Done that. So in this video, we have done all of the requirements of this particular Microsoft Applied Skills credential. Now, if you want more information about how to do this, taking all of this a bit more slowly, then you could have a look at the Microsoft Learning Path. So this goes into some of the requirements. However, bear in mind that most of the modules in this learning path were not specifically created for this Microsoft Applied Skills Assessment, only the last one was. Alternatively, you could join our course on the Microsoft Applied Skills Creating Canvas Apps with Power Apps. So in just two and a half hours, we'll go through all of the requirements of this Microsoft Applied Skills. We will install Power Apps and Environments, we'll create a Canvas app from a template and then one from scratch, We'll create a Canvas app with a gallery from scratch. We'll add a detailed screen, including using some of the Power FX formulas that we've had a look at in this video. And then we'll create an edit screen and additional icons. We'll also have a look at sorting and searching for items. And then we'll have a look more at using data sources in your Canvas apps. We'll be using Excel data sources throughout this course and there'll also be a quiz and there are plenty of practice activities so that you can be sure that you are learning. Once you have completed this course and with a bit of practice, and for that you can also use the guided project here at the bottom of this Microsoft Learning Path, then you should be ready to take the Microsoft Applied Skills Assessment for Create and Manage Canvas Apps with Power Apps.
that would look great on your CV or resume. So I hope to see you in our course. A link to this course is available in the description to this video. Well I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then why not click like and why not subscribe and click that bell, that way you'll be notified of any new videos. And there's plenty more on this YouTube channel about Microsoft Applied Skills, why not have a look at the video and playlist on the end screen. I hope you enjoyed this video, I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com, thanks for watching and keep learning.